five pupils from a primary school in Cornwall are making the most of a local landmark. Are you looking forward to an exciting afternoon? Yes. yes. Are you ready to travel back in time? Yes. yes. A 450-year-old castle to help bring them closer to the past. To start their project about the Tudors, King Charles Primary School in Falmouth will be visiting Pendennis Castle. But before they set off, there's work to be done. We've got to have a bit of a chat before we go. Now, when we get up to the castle, what are we likely to see? What do we expect to see up at Pendennis? Alex? We expect to see old Tudor um, games or clothes, something like that. OK. The castle sort of dominates the local area, and uh, the children can see it most days when they walk to school. Um, but many of them, although they've been up there before, have been up there with parents and they haven't necessarily looked at the history side of it, they've looked at the wide open spaces and gone for a run. Well, so we can take them up there and um, use the experts to guide us, um, give us some insight into the life of the castle. And what do you expect the building to be made from? Nicola? Stone. OK. Adam, have you got any idea? Do you think they're likely to have windows, Adam? Yes. Yes? Teachers spend an awful lot of time planning and they can actually go and, and harness things in the environment that they know are going to be exciting and stimulating for the children. It's much more real for a child to go and visit Pendennis Castle, for example, than it is to read about Pendennis Castle in a book or even through ICT. Pendennis Castle is a stone artillery fortress founded by Henry VIII in 1540 and sits high on a headland overlooking Falmouth. Fortunately for the pupils, it's just a short walk away from their school. The lesson started as soon as we left school, really, getting children to watch out for other pedestrians, definitely works with their social skills, uh, making sure that they take care across the road safely. When you've got 30 children with you, you have to really look out for all the other dangers and you see all the other aspects and all the other features around and you're able to point them out to the children, highlight aspects about their local locality that maybe they hadn't noticed before or even given any thought. So it's always, it's always nice walking somewhere with a class. Look, get a view of the castle now, look. Well, invariably children often get taken everywhere by bus or in cars and it's, it's a really good opportunity actually just walking, taking the kids from the school to the place that you're visiting, um, gives them a chance to really sort of, well, A, develop particular skills in terms of health and safety so they're actually aware of what's going on around them. And it's also good for other people, perhaps in the town, to actually see these kids out and about. At the castle, the pupils will be taking part in a series of activities devised by English Heritage, which maintains 400 similar monuments nationwide. Hello. Hello, how are you? Welcome to Pendennis. Nice, nice to, to see you. you. Are you looking forward to an exciting afternoon? Yes. Are you ready to travel back in time? Yes. We work very closely with schools to make sure that the workshops and the sessions that we provide really fit into the national curriculum and are really meeting their needs. We're very wary that we don't want to just provide workshops without having consulted with schools. And that's what I want to look at today. How people lived what the differences were between perhaps them and us, and also between the rich and the poor. From the minute they walk through the gates to the minute they leave, they are in the right environment. Their mindset is the right mindset for absorbing the information. So what I'm going to do is literally step into the shoes of some from the past, and we'll just explore how it might have been Rather than trying to deliver a workshop that's this, this and this, this is what the costume is, this is what they did and this is how they did it, it seemed easier to be a person from the past. But first of all, literally, the shoes and the stockings. Very fine stockings, not silk, these. Only the really the queen and very rich people can wear silk stockings. Stepping but back into the past, as an individual I've researched, means that the information is accurate, which is incredibly important, but it's, it's interesting. That's what you want, it's to catch their interest, catch their enthusiasm, and if they absorb 
information just by osmosis. That's, a, that's good. And when I greet my guests, they come upstairs into the receiving parlour. And there they'll be able to see the new hangings on my four-poster bed. Very proud of them, I am, too. The benefit of a, of a site like Pendennis for teachers really is that um, first it's getting the children out of the classroom so it's, it's generating enthusiasm for a subject which can potentially be quite dry in the classroom if it's just sort of based on textbooks and that kind of thing. Very good cook. I think it, the, probably the main thing is it really helps bring the history alive for children, particularly if they are able to um, come to a workshop session where there might be a costumed interpreter that can actually go back into role, as we saw with Steph, um, when she went back into role as the, the Tudor lady. You know, it just really caught their, caught their imaginations. So if it wasn't for the charity of men like my husband, there are many who would find themselves unemployed. Visiting a, a historic property or an archaeological site or a historic building really can provide um, an excellent opportunity to contextualise history and the place really comes to life when you go and visit some of the, the places where they offer perhaps living history, an opportunity to handle original artefacts. You get that first-hand experience that, um, that really enables pupils to understand and make the connection to themselves. So they might be looking at somebody's costume or somebody's clothing and they can see how different it is from their own. I might just walk in the gardens of my house in Wine Street, just trailing the gown behind me, because it doesn't matter. Well, I've learned that there's a big difference between rich people and poor people. The rich people wear nice velvet and they have silver embroidered along like the sleeves and the hem of the dresses. Um, and the poor people probably wore Absolutely not wire. very nice clothes. Down, so I think maybe that will be what I do. Learning about Tudors in Pendennis Castle is more like you're in Tudor times because this was built in 1550 and that's during the time of Henry VIII and instead of school because that's just, I don't know, modern day 2006. During the second part of the workshop, the pupils have the opportunity to get their hands on the type of artefacts that Tudor children would have used. Miss, with a quill pen, you don't need to dip your pen right in the ink. You just need to put a tip in. During the workshops, they're all focused. They're loving the activities, playing the games. Um, you could walk around the room and all the talk was about the Tudors and their life and the things that they were doing, they weren't going off track. You could see that they were completely focused at the task in hand. Have a go. See, see what, how you get on. See if you can write your name or, you know, this is Pendennis Castle. You may be going, for example, to study a specific thing in a specific subject, but that doesn't mean to say that you're not then going to get crossovers into other areas and to other subjects. It wasn't just history they're learning while up there. The use of the, uh, the quills and the ink um, shows me that some of them have actually got some quite nice handwriting and be able to carry that back. We can carry that into their literacy and they're more likely to want to uh, write a story or write a, a piece of information text if they're using their quill because it, it, to them it seems more fun than giving them a handwriting pen and saying make that as neat as you can. Working in a workshop, um, you get to try lots of things. Um, when in a class, you've just got to really listen quite a lot of the time. <laughs> it's much better at the class because you actually got the real live things here. Well, at school, you only just get told it instead of actually seeing the real thing. Six. I think it's better um, learning in a workshop because you get to learn lots of things and if you really enjoy something then it sticks in your head more. It's much more different in the castle because you um, are supposed to uh, learn in the classroom you can actually see, smell and touch the whole thing. It's in the classroom and then show you pictures and tell you about it. Then you can see the real thing when you come to the castle. So it's a much better experience than in the classroom. It's handmade paper. You see, it's because it's um, handmade, it's not smooth. No schools in Ireland um, 
children need to know that they can learn within the school and also outside the school. And certainly the Falmouth community has a lot of energy and expertise that lends itself to learning both in school and outside. Back at school, the pupils discuss what they learned during the workshop before being set a research project based on the Tudors. You find out they play different yeah. games to us or yeah. the same games as us? Um, a bit similar to ours. Did they play football? Yeah. I think they did, but it wasn't but like but the football play. that we play now, is it? Um, yeah. Um, I know what the footballs were made of. What were they made of? Um, they were the inner tube who, like, the bit inside was made of blown up pig's bladder and then the outside hide was of leather. When children have been out into the local environment, for example, up to Pendennis Castle, they have a huge um, menu of things that they are interested in. Six months in shoot times could buy you about 24 loaves of bread. Well, that would last you a couple of days, the way that you eat. We can then explore where they need to go next and we can actually then capture their interests and enthusiasm and take the children's interests as a starting point for future learning. Different forms of writing that we can access today, and we can access them on the internet or possibly through looking at books. We're so going to talk about what they can actually remember from the trip, and then they're going to have uh, working in groups, working, you know, looking at specific topics. They will then be able to research that area further bring back what they found and share it with the rest of the class, while others are looking at Tudor music, putting together um, maybe a Tudor poster, advertising what we're doing, um, using as many different forms of ICT as we can during the one lesson, but not overloading it so it becomes cluttered. Now, how are you going to find out about this? Well, you're going to go on the internet. Yeah, one of you, well, one of you needs to Richard Poor. We're really privileged in this country in that we have history all around us. And um, you don't need to have a castle right on your doorstep to be able to teach history. Here at King Charles, we're really lucky to have Pendennis Castle on our doorstep. But even if we haven't got that, we are going to use Tudor artefacts. Um, OK, they're mock Tudor artefacts, but as far as the children are aware, they're real. And bringing those into the classroom um, immediately livens up the lesson. They can, touch history, they can feel it, they can see what it felt like, they can smell it, and that will help to bring the lesson alive. I say we're lucky to be able to go up to the castle, but other schools could use bringing primary resources into the classroom to support their teaching. Schools can make use of their own building and uh, research the history of their own school, or they could perhaps research their local high street or their local community. Um, look at how things have changed and how things have developed over time. There are a lot of resources, a lot of places where they can find resources, whether it's the local library or from grandparents, perhaps. They can get oral history records from them. So there's a whole wealth of, of information out there that schools can tap into. I think it's really important that we get the children out of the classroom as often as we can. There's a lot of, a lot of work involved with doing it, but the rewards from doing it are immense. The children get into their local locality, they get to interact with other people in the area, um, and it just makes it all more memorable for them.